Hey there, I'm Source Make, otherwise known as the Localized, and in this video we are going to go over the Paladin slash Smite API. So in this video we are going to talk about what the API actually does and how you use it. We're going to go over some low level details about how the API actually functions, and it's going to be a little bit confusing, but don't worry about it. We're going to go through it together. Then we're going to go through some example code um, about how to actually make API calls. And finally, we're going to end the video by looking at some websites that developers have made that actually make use of the API. So all of these resources are on my website. You can go ahead and click the link below this video to get to my website, and you'll get to this webpage. And while you're down there, you can hit the subscribe button for this YouTube channel. Thanks. So the Paladin Stats Smite API. Hi-Res Studios is the company that made the game Smite and Paladins, and they offer a certain service to software developers, which is the Paladins API, or the Smite API. And any developer that requests credentials, you can find the link right here to the form. Will um, If you get approved, you get access to some documentation about the API. You'll get a valid API key, and you'll get access to this really secret chat group where basically there's this one high-res developer, and we bother him all the time, high-res Aaron, to actually fix stuff and add endpoints and stuff like that. So um, what about this API? How does it actually work? Well, um, so Paladins has um, Paladins and Smite are two games by Hi-Res Studios, and there's a bunch of information about both of those games that need to be stored in the database. So for example, maybe a certain champion has a gun that hits for 500 damage. That number needs to be stored in the database. Or maybe a certain player has 20,000 gold, and every time they log in, they need to know that and be able to spend that gold. Well, all of that information is stored in the database that Hi-Res has, and Hi-Res gives access to that database through certain API endpoints that they give to the software developers to use. So for example, um, let's zoom in a little bit more. We can see that there's one endpoint named get match history. And you can see that if you give it a certain player's name, it will get the recent matches and high level match statistics for that particular player. So basically we can stalk this player. So that's one endpoint, but there are a bunch of endpoints that Hi-Res makes available. So how do we actually call this endpoint? Well, you have this base URL, and this particular base URL in this example is for the Paladin's PC endpoint. You call the get match history endpoint. Then you have a few other details. One is response format, which is either JSON or XML. You've got a developer ID, which was given to us when we got our credentials. You get this signature and session, um, you have to give that, which is a little bit complicated. We'll go over it, but we'll make it really easy. You need to give the current timestamp, and of course, you need to give the player name that we're going to be stalking. So that is what you need for a certain API call. If you filled all this information in, and even if you entered it in the browser, it's a simple get request. You know, you, you get the response back, you get all the information you'll need. We'll see that in the code. So what are signatures? Well, a signature happens when you do the following. You take a developer ID, you take the method name, which in this case is get match history. You take the authentication key that you were given when um, you requested your credentials, you have your own authentication key, and you take the timestamp. You concatenate all those together into a string, and you hash it with an MD5 algorithm, and that's what the signature actually is. So you need to do that every time you make um, an API call. You also need this thing called a session. So basically, um, a session authenticates every time you want to actually use the database. So I like to think of it like this. Let's say there's a certain club, and the high res database is a club, and there's a bounce to that club. He only lets certain people in, people with valid API credentials. Well, anytime you want to get into the club, you need to show your ID card, your API credentials, to the bouncer. And the bouncer says, OK, you know what? Um, here, I'm going to stamp your hand. So this stamp is going to last for 15 minutes. During that 15 minutes, you can go into the club as much as you want back and forth. And you basically, you can make as much API calls as you want, as many API calls. And um, that's basically what a session is. So um, anytime you want to use the API, you basically create this session. You get back this ID. And then when you want to call other endpoints, you have to actually show that session ID to make sure that they know that you have your hand stamped. So that's how sessions work. To make a session, you call the create session endpoint. You do that once every 15 minutes. It's best practice. or um, Otherwise, you can do it every time you make an API call, but that's not good practice, basically. So now that we know how these um, API calls work, let's go through some example code. Um, and 
we're really fortunate actually let me not do that yet so we're really fortunate because one particular developer has this node.js paladin's api wrapper library which is um makes things easier for us he has certain endpoints like uh right here get match details get champions get items he has that available with the wrapper that you can just call easily so we're going to make use of that in our own code so you can use any programming language you want but we're going to use node.js because we find that to be the easiest. So I'm gonna move this window. No, I didn't mean to maximize it, come on. My aim isn't that bad. Aim, get it, because you know you need aim for video games, but okay. Uh, let's uh, create a folder, a project folder. So basically we're gonna create um, some example code that actually is going to call get match history. I think that's the endpoint that we're gonna call. So on our desktop, I'm going to create a new project folder. Let's just call it API. So we've got this API folder, let's go inside. So we need to add some files in here, some code to actually run. And I'm gonna open a, cell, a shell session, a terminal. I'm gonna say bash to make this Ubuntu even though I'm on Windows right now. And what do we need to do? The first thing we need to do is we need to npm init. Again, I said this is Node.js code, so not twice. So we need to basically make a node package so the package name, we'll just name API. Version can be 1.0.0. Description will leave blank. The entry point is index.js. Everything else, we're just going to press enter through. So that's it. Now, we need to create two files. And by the way, you'll see that we have our package.json file. That's basically what we made. So we need to create these two other files, one called config.js and one called index.js. And con Oh, right, let me not forget this. So we also need to actually save the library that we talked about. So this is the node library for the Paladin's API that we're gonna be using in this particular example. It's gonna make our lives easier because we don't have to write the code to do all the hashing ourselves. The library is gonna do it all for us. So um, let's open our config.js file and we're gonna paste this in. So basically we have a dev ID and an authentication key. Now these are not my actual credentials. I'm gonna move this over to my other monitor. I'm gonna enter my own information so that we can actually get through the example. And let me just close this and we'll move this back so it's saved. So um, you can enter your own credentials if you have them in the config.js file. The next thing we need to do is open index.js file. This can be the last bit of coding that we do. Oh, it is open. I don't know why I pressed it twice. So you're gonna copy this code right here. I don't know if you can see it that well, but it's on the web page. It's super zoomed in right now, but you can copy it into index.js and you can see that it's just, I've got comments here, so I don't wanna go over too much of it, but you can see that we're calling the get match history endpoint with the um, Node.js wrapper library. And what are we gonna do? We are going to stalk the PC player Z1 unknown. And we're just gonna look at his match history because he's a player maybe that we're interested in. So that's gonna be our example. I'm gonna close that up. How do we actually call this code? We're gonna say node index.js in the terminal. And by the way, if you don't have node installed or this is the first time you're seeing node, there's a link on the webpage like somewhere around here where I have another blog post where we go over how to use Node.js to make API. So it's worthwhile to do that if you're interested in this kind of stuff and make it really easy for you. So um, node index.js, we see this out.txt file got generated and that's our response from the endpoint. So, so this is what the endpoint returns, something like this. It's a lot of lines, so let's, uh, let's format the JSON to make it look really nice and we can maximize this again. So we'll process this. I, just a standard JSON formatter to make it look pretty for us to view. And I'm gonna open it up and let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so basically for each match that Z1 Unknown was in, we have um, these, these, how would you say this? This information about it. So we've got this JSON and you can see that the player name is Z1 Unknown. Can we zoom in even more? Yeah, okay, let's zoom in a lot. So the player name is Z1 unknown. The win status for this particular match was a loss. Come on, Z, you can do better than that. You have that the match was 736 seconds. You see that the region he queued was North America. It was a siege queue. You can see that he had 12 seconds on the objective, which is what this particular um, information piece is. You can see the time of the match. Wow, our stocking skills are really good, right? You can see the map name, the match ID, et cetera, et cetera. So you can get all of this information from that particular endpoint. Let me zoom back out a little. 
And that's just one endpoint, though. That's get match history. There are a bunch of endpoints that you can use to make really cool stuff for the community or just make something useful. So with that in mind, we're going to look at some websites that other developers have made with um, with the API. So the first one is paladins.guru. It's really simple. I think you know what paladins.guru is. Basically, they have match history and a bunch of really pretty stuff. This is like the best most professional looking website for Paladins, I think, and they use the Paladins SAS Smite API. There's also this other website called the Better Meta. So this one guy, he basically has these charts that um, he calls the API basically, and he gets statistics for each champion or a whole bunch of stuff. And you can see in this particular chart, he has individual champion performance. So for each champion, he has their win rate for each patch. And it's like really useful information that's really cool. So you can also do stuff like that with the endpoint with the Paladins API. Another website is um, this guy actually made the API endpoint available for anyone to use if you go to this web page. So for example, here's the example that I made him show me. Let's zoom in a little bit. So if you enter this stuff on the left, you get this stuff on the right. So for example, I told him, okay, I want the match details for this particular match ID. And I want this information returned, the player name, their ID, the team score, etc. And if you press play, it returns on the right. So for example, for this particular match ID, um, Stolze was playing in that game and this is the information for him. Its aspect was playing, a whole bunch of other people were playing. So you can actually call the API yourself using this tool without even needing to um, request credentials or write code. So that's pretty cool. The guy did that for us. And the final website that we use is cusqt.com. This is actually a website that I made myself. So um, what it, what it is is you have this search bar here, and let's say you want to say see Z1 Unknown's loadout. You type his name in, you press submit, and it's really basic. It doesn't look pretty, but it's functional. You can see that it calls the API to actually call the get player loadouts endpoint, and it formats all of his players' loadouts, all of his champions' loadout. So that's the Paladin's API. Um, that's it. If you're a developer and you want credentials yourself, there are links at the top of the page where you can apply. You can go ahead and do that to make cool stuff. If you're just a game player who likes using these websites, do give a shout out to all the community, the people in the community, the developers who make these websites because they don't work for high res, but they do make these cool websites for you to use. So um, do give them their props. It's really nice of them to do that. Now, in another video, I might make another video to actually show how more details about how to use the API. I might show how I made this cusqd.com website. I don't know if there's interest, I'll do it, but th that involves a lot of code. But yeah, that's basically the Paladin slash Smite API. And I'm SourceMaker, otherwise known as Delocalize. If you like this content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below this video, maybe the like, maybe leave a comment so I know to make more videos like this. And otherwise, happy gaming. Hopefully you now know how the API works and how to use it yourself if you'd like to. So yeah, thanks for watching.